Welcome back to the Booze Buddy Update for Thursday, March 24th of 2022. It's brought to you by Green Mountain Payments, helping small businesses, breweries, and independent business owners who need affordable merchant credit card processing solutions, point of sale solutions, and expertise. Get more at GreenMountainPayments.com. It's hard to go to a place you don't know, do something you've never done before, and not feel embarrassed. That's why it's great that Food & Wine put together a simple article on how to behave at a winery according to the professionals. I started going when my state had some open winery weekends many years back, and I had been to one with friends, but I felt like I barely knew what was going to happen at that time. I would say there's two issues that are missing from the article on behavior at a winery, and that would be that uh, if you were given the option to spit out the wine, yeah, uh, some people are only tasting it and they're not drinking it. While you may not make that choice, you should be prepared that other people uh, near you may be choosing not to consume much of the wine, if any. Uh, the other issue is that you should go in with a bit of an idea of the kind of wine that you like, at least the kind of flavors that you like. You like wine that's red, do you like white wines, dry, semi-sweet, fruit, buttery? Those are just a couple of simple terms that you can start to hone in on some of the styles that would be recommended if they make several wines. Now, I've only run into this at a few larger wineries uh, because the smaller ones only had enough for a couple of options in the flight. For the rest of the tips, head to the link that is in the show notes. And no doubt about it, hard seltzer, canned cocktails, and RTDs have changed things for many craft brewers, but Lagunitas may have found kind of a middle ground, something that's different, but could be arguably healthier. And it certainly is approachable for people who could be new to craft beers and craft brewers. So Lagunitas trying a different kind of drink, spiked teas. Disorderly Tea House will come in at 5% ABV in yuzu lemon squeeze and mixed up berry flavors. Look for them in 12 ounce and 19 ounce cans. The 12 ounces have 100 calories, two grams of carbs, gluten-free and zero sugar. And checking their website, it does appear to be available in some nationwide retailers and available by mail order in some other markets, but doesn't seem like it's all yet. And the link, of course, to that is in the show notes. And Mother Road Brewing's Golden Ale has won them an Environmental Excellence Award from a partnership with Arizona's Game and Fish Department. The goal is to help protect over 800 species with the over $40,000 raised and maybe growing that have been raised. Those private funds will help quite a bit. Arizona's Game and Fish Fund is entirely self-sustaining and receives zero public funding. In the first of its kind U.S. collaboration between a wildlife management agency and a brewery that has been going on since 2019. Grab a Mother Road Golden Ale and read more about it at the links that are in the show notes. I say links because one's to uh, their site. The other is, of course, about the award for uh, uh, the partnership that they have. Now remember, don't drink and drive. Stay safe, drive sober, and support the booze that supports your local community. And I'll see you again tomorrow.